Hey guys, what's going on? Gearing up for an active tornado season. Our forecast was right on in 2024, which turned out to be just shy of a record-breaking year. Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas had a resurgence of tornado activity in 2024. There were stunning tornadoes, but they were also dangerous and launched us into search and rescue mode at least a couple of times. Surprise outbreaks also happened in Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. Dixie Alley had a lull in tornadic activity, but the numbers were still high in Dixie Alley, and we're gonna explain why. But in 2025, we expect something different than what we've seen in the last two seasons. We expect a shift in the maximum of tornadic activity. We could be in for some historic events in unexpected places, and here's why. There are two factors that determine tornado activity in the United States. The North Pacific Oscillation, or the NPO, and also El Nino, La Nina, further south in the Pacific. These sea surface temperature patterns will dictate where the jet stream sets up and where it's displaced downstream across North America. And these patterns of the warm North Pacific Oscillation, coupled with El Nino, led to a very active season in 2024 with 1,735 tornadoes, which was the second highest on record behind 2004. But when looking at just the big ones, strong tornadoes or EF2+, the 2024 season was the second most active on record behind 2011. And it even caused the Greenfield, Iowa tornado, in which the strongest wind speeds were ever recorded on Earth just above the ground. But something big just happened that changes everything. In December, we transitioned from an El Nino to a La Nina, and that's gonna lead to a whole different setup for tornadoes in 2025. See, last year in Dixie Alley, it had a high pressure that dominated the region and protected it from tornadoes, basically like a bubble, deflecting the storm systems north and south of Dixie Alley. Overall, tornado numbers were deceiving for Dixie Alley in 2024 because you had over 100 tornadoes with Hurricane Barrel and over 100 with Hurricane Milton across Florida alone. But now that we have La Nina coupled with a warm North Pacific, the jet stream can just rake across North America from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic. This will lead to coast-to-coast -to -coast storm systems that will break down the high pressure center that has protected Dixie Alley over recent years. It's the perfect recipe to bring high-end tornado outbreaks because we've seen these conditions before and they brought some major tornado dates with them. April 27, 2011 and April 3rd and 4th of 1974. These are the dates of two super outbreaks that are the most significant in recorded history in the US. But there are other notable years that also match the conditions that we're seeing in 2025 in the Pacific Ocean. And that's 1999, 2008, and 2013. Each of these years saw significant outbreaks, including a short but very intense season in the Southern Plains. So analyzing what we've seen before, we expect a return of super outbreaks in Dixie Alley in 2025, extending from the Mississippi River Valley through the Ohio River Valley to even parts of the Northeast. And these conditions will lead to tornadoes that are on the ground for a long time. Some of those tornadoes this year could even reach EF4 to EF5 strength. So while 2024 may end up having more overall tornado numbers, we expect 2025 to have stronger tornadoes from big time super outbreaks. But not everywhere is gonna see greater than normal tornadoes. We expect the Northern Plains to be below normal for 2025, and maybe even drought conditions could dominate there. But the bad news is, is that's because everything is moving east. Those areas are gonna get hammered. The Ohio River Valley to the Southern Great Lakes will likely be above normal in terms of tornadoes, and that's because of really high amplitude storm systems and strong mid-latitude cyclones with warm sectors that stretch all the way up to the Great Lakes. And also, without that high pressure shield that has been protecting Dixie Alley over the last couple of years, we expect that tornado activity to invade Dixie Alley in the form of super outbreaks. This could be the most active year for Dixie Alley in over a decade. And because of the dense population in Dixie Alley, this also could be the most dangerous and destructive, and that's why people of the region in Dixie Alley need to be on high alert this season. The Dominator 3 is getting tuned up to be there for every tornado threat so that we can stream this coverage live and keep people in the know in the path of these dangerous storms. There are three things to look out for for 2025, three factors that will influence the number of tornadoes in North America. The first factor is the above normal Gulf of Mexico. That provides the heat and moisture up to Dixie Alley in the warm sectors of these storm systems. When you have more heat and moisture and a lot of dry air aloft, that leads to stronger tornadoes. The second factor, and we expect this to continue, is the warm North Pacific Oscillation. That's the warm blob that leads to above normal tornado seasons in North America. 
And down in the tropical Pacific, we have La Nina. That's been dominating since December, but that's something that we have to watch closely because if that dissipates or is even replaced by El Nino conditions, then that could mean an above normal tornado season for the Great Plains as well. We also expect the timing of the tornado frequency to be different this year because of the La Nina conditions in the tropical Pacific. But we really took a beating in 2024 with the Dominator 3. We were able to recover in the off season thanks to this video sponsor, Helix Mattresses. One of the hard parts about storm chasing is we're driving all over the place. And sometimes we end up in some questionable places to sleep. In fact, the guy holding the camera actually got bed bugs in a hotel some years ago. You name it, it's happened out. I don't need much, as you can see, but I do need this. A nice, comfortable mattress from Helix. It's soft and hard at the same time. I don't even know how to put sheets on rice, so you can see layers of the bed here. You can actually see the mattress. Nice and soft. I have the Lux mattress by Helix, and this is where I get a good night's sleep so I can recover in the off season. And it's awesome if you do have a tornado warning and you have to take shelter, you can use your Helix mattress, just get in the bathtub, put your mattress over your head, and it gives you some extra protection. Any mattress is helpful, but with a Helix mattress, you could do it with a little bit of style and you can get a great night's sleep on a comfortable mattress. And right now, Helix is doing a 20% site-wide sale. Use helixsleep.com slash readtimmer to get yours. Thanks again to Helix for sponsoring this video. So here's what to expect as we go through the season. In March, early season tornado outbreaks in Dixie Alley are very possible. These early systems in March could be a sign of a very active season during the peak spring in Dixie Alley. In April and May will bring peak tornado season. I expect the tornado maximum to continue in Dixie Alley from the lower Mississippi River Valley all the way up to north of the Ohio River Valley. But we also expect an active tornado season to continue in the Southern Plains, but a likely short abbreviated season there. But it's also gonna be more intense with possibly even violent tornadoes, EF4 to potentially EF5 strength. That includes Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. Just like 2013, where you had about a two week season, but it was very active during peak May across Kansas and Oklahoma. The potential for a super outbreak in the east is definitely there. By summer, the activity shifts north by June and July, but in the northern plains, if La Nina conditions continue in the tropical Pacific, then I expect drought conditions to dominate those states like the Dakotas, Nebraska, east through Iowa. But we do expect the active severe weather to continue across the Corn Belt, the Southern Great Lakes, down to the Ohio River Valley through summer. This tornadic activity could extend into portions of the northeast into the peak summer as well. Past June, we don't expect as many tropical cyclone-induced tornadoes because of the emergence of El Nino conditions in the eastern tropical Pacific by late summer into fall. However, any hurricanes that do develop will of course still pose a tornado threat. It only takes one or two hurricanes to cause big problems. And let me show you all the things we're doing to the Dominator 3 to get it ready for tornado season. We've taken apart the doors. We're fixing the window lift systems. We're gonna need the protective polycarbonate to keep us safe inside of tornadoes. Very complicated door systems here. We're also putting all new buttons inside of the Dominator 3. But we really took a beating last year, not only from tornadoes, but we also hit a deer in North Texas and we had to rebuild the entire front end. So we've done a lot of repairs to the front end and all the Lexan window systems. And the air compressor system of the Dominator 3 needed a major overhaul as well. We were stranded on the side of the road a lot during 2024. So we've got two new compressors in the back. Everything is cleaned out. New batteries, new wiring in the Dominator. This is pretty much the nucleus of the Dominator 3. And if the air system fails, then we're stranded on the side of the road and we can't intercept tornadoes. So we're doing a lot of repairs to the Dominator 3. We've got all these upgrades thanks to our Team Dominator members. The Dominator 3 repairs are continuing. We've also, with the help of Will Clay, we have been able to connect our RM Young anemometer to live stream that data. So you're gonna be able to see real-time wind speed as we're intercepting tornadoes, real-time pressure falls, and we're getting our rocket system set up. We're gonna be launching sensors into these tornadoes, potentially dozens of sensors inside of the tornado, and you'll be able to see a three-dimensional animation of those probes inside of the tornado in a real-time estimate of tornado intensity. And you can kind of see through the window there, we have an upgrading live streaming system, much improved audio, as well as a multi-camera live streaming method. We're gonna be able to bounce to drone coverage as well, real time. You're gonna be able to see those rockets launching into the tornado from the Dominator from a drone perspective. 
and then you're going to be able to see those drones flying around inside the tornado in real time. So we'll be able to know if we're dealing with an EF2, EF3, EF4 tornado as it's coming into these communities, and that information saves lives. And we're gonna have upgraded sensors this year from Will Clay. We're gonna show you those real-time displays as well. These are the rockets that we're gonna be launching into the tornadoes that will transport those live sensors into the vortex. This is gonna be insane. First time ever science mission. You're gonna see these sensors inside of a tornado, dozens of sensors in the tornado, all streaming live data. And that's even going to give us a real-time tornado intensity estimate. And the Team Dominator engineer, Will, is working with Brian, and we are going to send that live sensor data up to the live stream, and you're gonna be able to see a three-dimensional animation of those sensors inside. You're gonna see wind speed, the pressure fall in there, basically like the movie Twister, but in real life. But if you don't believe us, you just wait and see. And on this panel right here, we're gonna put the names of all of our Dominator 4 members right here on this panel. Your names are gonna go on here as we're intercepting tornadoes. Thank you for supporting our science mission. So that's what we have for this year's tornado season. It's very important for you to stay safe. Stay tuned to those severe weather watches and warnings. Practice your family's severe weather safety plan. Stay tuned to our live stream or your local news coverage. Keep those weather radios charged up because it's gonna be a very active tornado season across the central and eastern US. Thanks and never stop chasing.